And if Kyle Klei or Coco would like to tie Artem Levin, they will have to record a knockout in this fight. Levin with three points after he knocked out David Keslick in Long Beach, California. Kyle Klei, Matrix, Kenan Orsing. Combat sports fans may recognize the name and recognize his efforts in K1. Now known as a giant killer in K1, beating the likes of none other than Mighty Mo. That goes back to what we talked about earlier tonight with Melvin Manhoof knocking out Mark Hunt. I mean, it's not the size of the fight in the dog, but the size. there's the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog, and this guy's got power. Well, not just power, fantastic timing, great evasive ability. Both of these fighters are, are unbelievable. Here's a tale of the tape. All right, as we get ready for this Group B light heavyweight matchup, Coco is six years older. They're both 5'11", and both weighed in at 181 and three-quarter pounds. Both of these gentlemen are gentlemen that I fought before, and I can tell you that they're both very good. I know their pedigree. Two wars I had with Gao Kla, he's left me with an autograph that I've got permanently on my face. Uh, was my last world title fight was against Gao Kla. He's extremely slippery, hard to hit. Uh, his nickname is The Matrix because he's got that ability to bend way back over and avoid getting hit. Roberto Coco, on the other hand, fantastic hands. It's tricky jumping knees, which he caught me with a couple times, and uh, he's a great fighter. So it's going to be an explosive uh, matchup here. I don't think there's a favorite here, and I think Roberto being at home is, uh, is going to have the support of his fans. All right, Chris Gregory is standing by with the official introductions. All right, fight fans, here we go. First in the white corner, weighing 82.5 kilos. That's 181 and three quarter pounds. He stands 5'11", age 28, from Bangkok, Thailand. He's fighting out of Jockey Gym with a record of 87 and 36. 15 wins by way of knockout. This man's the IKKC Muay Thai World Cruiserweight Champion and the 2010 WBC Muay Thai Light Heavyweight World Champion. I present to you, Kao Kai. And across the ring, weighing 82.5 kilos, that's a 181 and three quarter pounds. Standing 5'11", age 34. From Turin, Italy, he's fighting out of X1 Boxing Torino. His record, 97 and 36. 47 wins by way of knockout. This man was the 2006 Super Middleweight Boxing National Cup winner, as well as a 2008 Intercontinental Boxing Champion and pre saint Didier. Here is Roberto, the Godfather, Coco! <laughs> and once again, your referee for tonight's fight, Yusef Aknik. Both these fighters with a ton of experience, so I don't expect that they're going to be over-anxious here tonight. Fair fight. Listen to my comments. When I say stop, you stop, you step back. Clear? Shake hands, step back. Set for three three-minute rounds in the MPL light heavyweight division. Group B action. Kyle Clyde fighting out of the jockey gym. The Mong Kong is being removed. See the traditional Thai tattoos on his Fight. back, also believed to add protection and uh, magic. Sometimes in Muay Thai, fighters can be a little superstitious. <laughs> oh, big shots already from, from, oh. from Roberto. As I said, he's a great boxer, great technician. Coco started learning martial arts at the age of six in his hometown of Torino, beginning with judo, but then progressing to kickboxing. He's been involved in Muay Thai for the past 16 years. There's a push kick from Kyle Klein. <laughs> Plenty of experience on display here. Inside, low kick delivered by Coco. Beautiful overhand elbow there by Galco. Oof. Deep followed by a right body kick from Kao Klai. There's another left elbow. Coco back in Kaukai into the corner, but he's able to keep him at bay with a deep and another one. The nose hurt. I could see, you know, Roberto taking a deep breath there. They heard they're not just soft uh, push kicks. They definitely take the wind out if you get too many of them. Oh, Kaukai. Oh, wow, nice kick from Coco. And 
Koku now getting a little aggressive, looking for the elbows, and ends up on the ground. But uh, I think Kao Klai... Looked like Koku had him there in the yeah. guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely uh, has uh, Kao Klai's attention after that kick, and there's another kick. Mep with a push kick from Kao Klai. One of the good things that I noticed with Roberto that I haven't seen with some of the fighters, I saw it with Mohamed Kamal as well, is that he's in the right range for the weapon that he chooses. So when he's in punching range, he's using the punch as well and using the kicking well. He's a smart fighter. And like Kamal, he's using a good boxing guard, huh? keeping his hands high, keeping them tight. There's a jab from Kao Klai. Straight right manages to slip through that guard, and there's again the push kick. Kao Klai mixing it up nicely here in round one. Nice jab. I think those push kicks, though, are having effect. You can see a red welt already developing on the stomach. Oh, beautiful combination. Nice combo from Coco. Less than a minute remaining in the opening round. Turning the tables is Kao Klai, and turns Coco right onto the canvas. Low kick as Kao Klai wanted to touch gloves, and Coco instead delivered a low kick, but then kind of apologized with the body language. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the opening round. Nice knee to the side there by Coco from the clinch. Is this the uh, kind of round you expected it for an opening three minutes? Well, I, I, the pace is a little bit slower than I expected. I mean, but uh, again, both fighters are measuring each other, so. We're going to round two. So with the uh, action getting hot and heavy here in the Muay Thai Premier League, the second event coming to you from Padova, Italy. Let's take a look at the updated welterweight standings in Group A, Schneidmiller and uh, Sayok, who we just saw record a victory over Mauro Serra, each with two points. In Group B, it's Michael Dix and Mohamed Kamal, who defeated uh, Harrison earlier tonight, each with two points. Well on their way to earning the NPL title, or at least getting to the Olympic Nations. Lots of talent in all four men's weight classes, and of course, the lone female division, the super lightweights. And we saw a couple of great fights from the females tonight, as well as Ilona Wymans defeated Chantal Ugi, while Tainara Lisboa defeated Canadian Sandra Bastian. And still to come, it's middleweight action. Kai Hollenbeck, San Francisco, California, representing the Stars and Stripes here tonight. Kai Hollenbeck undefeated right now and been dominating a lot of fighters. And here is his opponent, Jordan Watson, who has been uh, in contender Asia and contender season two, fought in the finals of the King's Cup. Well decorated for this young man's age. Best nickname in Muay Thai, Quadzilla. <laughs> Quadzilla because he's got those uh, extremely built uh, quadricep Which muscles. come in handy in Muay Thai. My Jordan, what big quads you have. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a little, uh, not to, to say disappointed, but you thought there would be a more aggressive uh, opening round. You expect that and then to turn it into... Uh, Turn it up here in second stanza. It's challenging sometimes when you're fighting a fighter like Gauk Lai. His timing is off and he makes you miss. But I expect that Roberto will come out a little bit more aggressive. As I said, they both have experience and they're not wild. But they're going to both have to do something that needs to make Gauk sure. Gauk Lai they're... starts with two push kicks and then goes upstairs with the third one and backs Coco up to the ropes. The clinch is not one of Coco's strongest places. I think that, uh, you know, when I fought it, ooh, beautiful overhand right. So you feel this is an area that Kao Klai can exploit as the clinch? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Kao Klai's got really, really good elbows and good knees, and he's tricky in there. So I think that for Coco, he's got to keep the fight at distance. Oh, elbow from Coco as Kao Klai did a 360. Looking for a spin back kick. There's another strike from Coco in close. So maybe Coco is hearing us and saying, oh, yeah, you guys think I can't do anything in the clinch? Watch this. I didn't say he couldn't. I just said that, that wasn't his best spot for me. And there's a knee from Kao Klai, but Coco again turning the table. So a much more aggressive start to the second round. Definitely a little bit more action. Both fighters looking like they want to stake their claim on it and win. Frustrating to fight Kao Klai because he keeps you at bay with that push. And you just want to get in and bang with him, but he won't let you. 
Well, Coco coming straight forward. Get into the clinch, looking for dominant position. It's Kyle Cloud with a couple of short knees with a minute 41 left in the middle frame. The herky-jerky motion of Kyle Cloud, always looking to keep you on your heels. Another knee as Coco goes in. And you see that immediately Coco threw a, a left hook and Kyle Cloud slipped under it, wrapped around him. And that's what I mean when I say it's very, very hard to hit him. He's very, very slippery and frustrated. Did you hear the impact of that elbow? <laughs> Amazing impact, a minute, 10 seconds, another elbow from Coco. Wow. Got like a, making a little action with his eyes, we're seeing how do you like that. <laughs> Less than a minute remaining now in the second round, and again, using that push kick, but Coco still able to to close the gap, but there again, like you say, using the teeth, and that's what it is. It's like the leg, it's like a jab using the leg. It's using the gauge distance, keep your opponents at bay. Kyle Klein wanting to get away from the ropes. You can see uh, Coco getting a little nice frustrated. Double. Oh, got an elbow right back. I think part of the problem that Coco's having is he's too flat-footed, he's walking in there, gets that knee on the ground because he just got three points on the ground, as we mentioned earlier in the program. Very animated is Kyle Klein. You can tell he's enjoying himself just with the reactions of each exchange, there's another push kick. Coco he coming like, in. He likes to smile at you and wiggle his eyes and make oh, you feel bad. Straight bad. right hand catches Kalklai. Coco now doing some damage of his own in the final few seconds of the second round. And Kalklai saying, hey, nicely done with his raising of the eyebrows. We're going to round three. That should be good. Beautiful there, uh, Kyle Clyde, you see the high kick trying to spinning elbow again. Roberto countered with the elbow of his own, blocking and trying to walk that elbow. Ooh, and that was that big, huge elbow that made such a loud sound here at ringside. Beautiful right hand, and the thing about Galkwa is you very rarely get to hit him with more than one shot. I mean, he's so slippery, even when I remember fighting him once, throwing, landing a full flush, one, two, yep. and by the time my hook came, I fell through the rope and completely sideset. He <laughs> was gone. He was gone. You know, he used that to advantage when he was fighting in K1 against heavyweights because he's much quicker, and he was able to beat much bigger fighters because of the fact that he's great head movement and great football. Here's an updated look at the heavyweight standings of the Boy Time Premier League after the action tonight. In Group A, Nathan Corbett, sensational knockout win over Thomas Ron, leads Group A with three points, and Group B, atop the standings, Philip Berlinden with another sensational knockout in Long Beach, California over Martin Yon, and of course, Ramazan. Ramazan off with the uh, knockout of Chris Knowles tonight. So all three winners in the heavyweight division winning via form of knockout, which is uh, like you mentioned before, when the big boys come to play, they play for keeps. Someone has to pay. <laughs> <laughs> missing, one, one, missing one fight there tonight, Abdelhamid Kulamali versus Dizinius Hanchanarak from Belarus. I'll let you say those names, thank yeah, you. So I'll, I'll try to say them. Hanchanarak unfortunately had a broken ribbon training and wasn't able Second to make round. it tonight, so we'll see if he'll be able to make it final round. round. Let's hear it for these fighters! Third and final round as we are set for more action between Cal Klai and the godfather, Roberto Coco. It's been a sensational fight. Let's see what they save for the third round. Hopefully they save the best for last as we are underway. And Cal Klai again already along the ropes. And Coco meeting with the left hook and then try to sneak in an elbow strike as well. Great hand combination. That's what he's got to do a little bit more is just get in on tight and uh, let those hand goes on, on uh, Cal Klai. Oh, Kyle Klein attacking the legs now with his knees. Coco has a pretty good poker face. I don't know if Kyle Klein does. He's very animated. Both each using their own means to, to get in the opponent's head. One pretending nothing is bothering him, the other one playing mind games in the ring. 
But believe me, both of them wanting to win. Straight right from Kalkline oh, no, no, no. again. That beautiful head movement avoiding the counter from Coco. But Coco has him along the ropes now. Needs to try to create the separation so he can deliver some knees. But the referee short circuits any attempt. And that's exactly what Kalkline does. He frustrates you. I mean, every time Coco gets into a ring he wants to fire, Kalkline is grabbing him and wrapping him up. And then keeping him at distance with a push. He's a very frustrating fighter to compete against. Kalkline knows his strengths and does them well. Nice counter kick from Coco. Elbow from Cow Clyde. Another elbow. Another one. Slashing elbow across the forehead. And it misses with that one. Right hand from Coco, but again, ducking underneath into the clinch. The body lock by Cow Clyde. Referee pries them apart. A minute and 11 seconds left in the fight. You're watching Muay Thai Premier League action from Padova, Italy. Mauro Ranello along with Clifton Brown and Sonia Cooling. We hope you're enjoying the science of eight limbs wherever you may be watching around the world. Coco looking a little bit tired, a little frustrated, uh, not figuring out how to fight. Galpai Galpai is one of the best in the world at fighting world matches. Spinning. And that comes like a speed hook kick there by Coco. 42 seconds left in the fight. And in the corner of the Italian, they're saying, hey, there's 30 seconds, let it all out. Now or never, spinning back fist misses. Kyle Klein catches him with the left kick to the body. Very competitive fight. Yeah, the last round has had a little bit more action in it, but... Uh, Right now, to me, Gao Klai has won this fight. He's sort of separated himself by scoring more and more points and just keeping it a distance where, where Roberto can't do what he wants. Ooh, beautiful high kick, and Gao Klai misses a flying elbow. So we'll go to the judges' scorecards. Both athletes receiving a nice round of applause here from the crowd in Panama, Italy. Very competitive and... Uh, very good second round. I, I thought we might see a little more aggression to close out the fight, but let's take a look at the action nevertheless. There you can see Roberto Coco trying to land the hands, which he's well known for, but Galkai, ooh, beautiful right hand there. Got through the guard. He's one of the best at fighting going backwards, and Coco there just landed that spinning back kick, Galkai making a face of <laughs> him. <laughs> If that, uh, if that push kick of Galkai didn't disrupt that, that might have landed flush right on his jaw. He lands wow, with the bottom nice of the technique. foot, but he wants to land with the heel, sure. right? So uh, just a couple just inches a away. Just a couple inches. The game of inches and the athletes saluting the crowd here in Padova, Italy. Both of them embrace showing the sportsmanship, the camaraderie. Nine minutes of toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe action, and now they await the judge's decision. Who do you have winning that fight? I got Kafka. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. That's who I have. But you know what? I, I, like I say, I, I, I would have thought they would have ended more aggressively, but uh, give you know Roberto Coco all the credit in the world. He hung in there as we go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your decision. All three judges score this bout in favor for the winner by unanimous decision. In the white corner, Kao Kai! Kao Kai! And also a round of applause for the challenger, Roberto, Roberto Coco. Coco! Not a popular decision here in Italy. But an official decision, nevertheless. I would have to agree with it. I mean, obviously, we're at the home of Roberto Coco. It was a close fight. Uh, but I just think he didn't do enough. You know, Kao Kai, he allowed Kao Kai to play his game and do what he wanted to do, and you gotta make, take him out of his comfort zone if you wanna win. So Kaklai standing by with our own Sonia. Thank you very much, Roberto. A very, very strong fighter. Obviously been fighting martial arts all his life. How are you feeling in the house? How are you feeling in the house? How are you feeling? ก็ธรรมดาครับทุกบ้านเขาครับแล้วเราก็ชนะเขาไม่ขาดเท่าไหร่ครับผม
ครั้งต่อไปเราจะชกอยู่ที่บ้านของเราบ้านเกิดของเราในเนื่องในโอกาสห้าธันวารู้สึกยังไงคะมีอะไรเป็นห่วงไหมก็ก็ตอนนี้ก็ไม่เป็นห่วงอะไรครับชกอยู่ในบ้านเราแต่ว่าต้องฟิตซ้อมให้เต็มที่สักหน่อยคราวนี้ก็ฟิตซ้อมไม่ดีเท่าไหร่ครับก็ทําให้เขามีโหอะไรเงี้ยครับผม Well, he said he was uh, quite a close fight, and um, he wasn't as fit as he wanted it to be. Next time, he's going to be fighting in Thailand in his hometown, so he hopes to do a much better job. But uh, nevertheless, a great fight anyway. Thank you very much.